October 2024 and this video is inspired by once again one of my replies in the comment section disappearing and I tried different variations word crafting and encrypting certain words that I thought may trigger something and it keeps disappearing so I am doing a video about this now I don't know why my comments and replies disappear. There's nothing that I state or imply that would breach any anything. It would just disappears. And other people have said they found the same thing. But anyway, before I get into showing the video and scrolling down to the comment section and reading my reply, first I'm going to tell you what the question was and set the stage. And the question was, I'm going to paraphrase, is there anything about the Christian Bible that I think is true? Now, setting the stage to answer that question, what in known history, that we're told history is, can be trusted to be factual, real, truthful? And that right there sets the stage, sets the tone for, for example, the answer that I give. Now I'm going to focus us on a moment here about history and what we're told history is. We've all, or we should have, heard the old saying, history is written by the winners and that's very true. The winners or the people with the most money. But that's a different tangent. But what is told about history is starting to unravel even things that people have accepted as completely factual, the truth, and the truths have been coming out, and there have been people from the conception of various events throughout history arguing and fighting for the truth to be known and to keep the truth alive. Just a segue for a moment, perhaps this is part of my efforts with my story in the city of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, keeping the truth alive. But anyway, looking back throughout history and what we're told history is, it's starting to unravel. And even the big things that people have accepted as truth have or have been talked about more and more now. And it's very interesting to see how more and more people are as a descriptive awakening to all this. So with that stage set, the question is what in, or is there anything in the Christian Bible that I would consider factual? With that question being posed, you would have to either, for example, accept the Christian Bible as an authority, perfectly preserved, etc. or you don't. Now in some older videos, and I know I have a lot of Christians coming to my channel and so forth, and I've said many times, or at least a few times in videos, that I'm not a Christian. I don't adhere to any belief system, religion, or pseudoscience, but I digress. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll through the comment section and read my reply comment to this individual. My relationship with the Most High is not based on the writings or interpretations and teachings of others. It comes before any influences by religions, belief systems, or pseudosciences. 
I was born not alive for 45 minutes after surviving abortion, meaning I had no influence by any belief systems, religions, or pseudosciences. I was not alive twice by drowning, around 5 and 12 years old. The second time parallels at least one woo-woo event in my life. These are my not alive experiences, which differ to my near not alive and avoiding not alive experiences. I've had a lifetime of woo-woo events as well, which differs from spiritual events. No one was there for any historical accounts, which really doesn't matter when it comes to the Most High. Take for example the following. The Aramaic Targum Book of Genesis clearly states that the races, a politically correct way of saying subspecies, racism is the dominant struggle between each, were created separately. There is an assumption that Genesis 1 and 2 talk about the same event. The alternative changes understanding. This leads to the six batches of the human species of creation. Another set of examples, based on the original text from Judaism when putting together a super-religion, the Most High divided this part of creation among, quote, the twelve sons of God. This later changed to the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is a tangent of its own. One of the twelve sons appears to be Yahweh, who had a wife and offspring. This is not to forget the other species of creation, such as the various angelics, etc. Christianity could have been its own religion, belief system. The creators of it decided to attach to Judaism many hundreds of years later, rewriting their version of the Old Testament, the Talmud, Torah, to give themselves authority. For example, the original Hebrew text reads, to be born of a young woman. Christianity translated this to read virgin. However, when Christianity was translated back into Hebrew, it read virgin. What Christians need to reconcile is the translations back and forth should have had the same word when describing the said woman. Islam came along and took from both, with more focus on Judaism some 700 years after Christianity. I have content scheduled next month giving more insight about this. So my message has been very simple and clear with regards to this topic. And I've said to people of any religion, belief system, or pseudoscience, is to set all these things aside because it really doesn't matter. None of us were in history to witness anything. All you can do is rely on information that's been passed down and rewritten and altered and everything else. My message has been very simple and clear to focus on the Most High and only the Most High. And I've stated many times, even in videos, religions, belief systems have little to nothing to do with the Most High. Now here's the thing. When I tell people to set aside their belief systems and religions and so forth and just focus on the Most High, for many people, for some reason, many reasons. People get very triggered by it. They'll say, well yes, focus on the Most High, they agree with that. And very few people dispute that. However, it's when they say something to the effect of, yeah, but, which tells a lot about them. Something to think about. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me, oh, when is it going to get easier? When you die.